Hey there guys, this is Reckles with Want to Buy Gold, and today I'm going to show you how to farm up the seven most expensive pets in WoW. I'm excluding TCG and pet battle rewards here because I want to show you that even if you hate pet battles, you don't want to do them, you can still get rich off these guys. And rather than doing the typical YouTuber top 10 list, I'm actually going to show you my daily routine so you can copy that, go out there, duplicate it, and make some gold. In a nutshell, this route is Antoran Wastes, UBRS, Molten Front, and Pandaria Raid Finder, but before we do any of that, there's one thing you need to do first. Use the Time Loss Artifact Trinket to teleport out to Timeless Isle. Uh, the main goal here is to get Mogu Runes of Fate. They're the bonus roll for TOT, and they cost a thousand Timeless Coins each. But there are 27 pets out here, and they're surprisingly expensive. Like, uh, remember the, the tiny carps from Mop Fishing? Well, they're 100k each now. Each color was initially tied to a zone, but you can fish up all four here in the Timeless Isle. Uh, the rest of the pets are like 30k, mediocre, but there are two to be aware of. First thing I do whenever I enter Timeless Isle is stop by the cave north of the Celestial Court. There's a rare elite elemental in there called the Spirit of Jade Fire. He's green, has six spawn points, and shows up every 30 minutes to an hour. He also has a 2% chance to drop the Jade Fire Spirit pet, which sells for 100,000 to 350,000 gold each. Personally, I think it's kind of a waste of time to camp them, but do what you want, definitely check by whenever you're in the area. Next, we're headed out to the most expensive farmable pet in the game, the Spine Claw Crab. This guy sells for 400,000 gold minimum, up to 1.5 million in a pinch. Here's how he works. There's 30 spawn points of ancient Spine Claw Crabs in the water between the Horde Camp and the Gulp Frog Farm. They when you kill them, have a 3% chance to respawn as a monstrous Spine Claw Elite, which in turn has a less than 2% chance to drop the pet. Long story short, you'll get this clawsome little pet every 2,000 krills on average. Here's the best way I know how to farm them. Grab a stack of Feast of the Fishes. This is the this is from Volsharov Fisher Friends, and isn't actually just for trolling your raid team. It turns you into a fish, lets you swim faster than anything else in the game. You can still attack things, you can still kill things, and even though the buff only lasts three minutes, with bacon you can extend that. So you just swim back and forth between the horde camp and the gold frogs, killing everything. And because these do four spawn, uh, you can do this as a group. Just you know, don't be shellfish. Call out when an elite spawns. Honestly, it's a massive grind, but personally, I think it's way more fun than just farming Dungeness. Uh, if you're feeling lazy, though, and just want to be a hermit, an alternative is just hanging out at the Jade Mist Dancers. A third of the crab spawn right there. You don't have to sidestep all around. All right, you've got your Mogu runes. What's the actual route? Well, we're gonna start off in Antoran Wastes. There's a cave in the north with a bunch of imp mothers in it. Uh, do two laps of the cave, killing all the imps. They drop imp meat. After you have 100 imp meat, click on the stack in your bags, and you'll make a delicious imp meat feast. Mmm. Uh, place this in the lava pool, uh, the lava pool with the fish skeletons in it, and you'll summon Mother Rosala. She has a 1 in 15 chance to drop the rebellious imp pet. This guy sells for 100,000 to 400,000 gold. If you do this every day, that's two a month. 200K to 800K for a three minute farm. Not much better than that. My only, my only recommendation here though, is uh, that like all rares in Argus, she just has a ton of health. So use the Light Forged Warframe, it saves you a lot of time. Next, we're going to Black Rock Mountain for another really easy five minute farm. For Alliance, Portal back to Stormwind, fly east. For Horde, you want to take the Karazhan portal and fly north. Once you're inside the mountain, there's a little ledge on the right that you fly into. Go up the stairs on your left, and you will see the entrance to Black Rock Spire. Uh, this dungeon, make sure it's set to heroic. Uh, it won't work on normal or mythic. Then you just kill everything in the first room, kill the first boss, kill everything in the second room, and just to the right of the second boss, you will see that nothing is there. Nothing's ever there, like 90% of the time. But every once in a while, when you're lucky, you will see the rare elite spawn mini boss, the Lanticore. And if you see him, and if you're farming solo, then congratulations, it's a 100% drop rate for the pet, the Lanticore. And this guy sells for 70 to 200,000 gold right now. Personally, I've looted two in the past week. It's been a pretty good week. 
Next, we're taking the Mount Hygel portal to the Molten Front dailies, and I love these. It's really, they're the predecessor to the Timeless Isle and the, the Broken Shore and Argus, and it, to, per, to me, it's really cool to see where blizzards come from, what they've kept, what they haven't, when it comes to these, you know, dynamic endgame quest hubs. Essentially, though, what we're doing here is we're going to Ragnaros' hometown, his plane of fire, and we're, over the course of two weeks, of daily quests, building a new world tree. Also, lots of cool little achievements and fun little Easter eggs. There is some work to unlock all this, though. First, you need to do about half of the normal Mount Hygel quest chain. Uh, see how the zone's divided into half, like half of it's grass, half of it's rock? You want to do all the quests where there's grass. Second, you've got a really cool story that uh, actually made my friend Catherine cry. She's a huge lore nerd, so... No spoilers. Burn, Burn! Then you've got four quests at the Sanctuary of Malorn, four quests actually inside the Molten Front, and after a week of doing those, you'll unlock one of two additional quest hubs. Uh, after two weeks of doing those dailies, you'll be able to get 31 marks of the World Tree a day. Turn this into Zinvorka underneath the World Tree and buy the Zinvorka's Cache. It has a 1 in 20 chance to contain the goal of all this, the searing, scorchling battle pet. Little guy sells for 200k to 600k each. And it's a 1 in 20 drop chance. You'll probably get two per month. So that's 400k to a million gold a month per tune you do this with. Finally, we're headed to the Panda Portal Palace to put our Mogu Runes of Fate to good use. Uh, go talk to Lorewalker Cho. There's three pandas in front of him. There's a guy on the right, Lorewalker Han, who will cue you for Mist of Pandaria LFRs. Now, there are actually five that have good pets, like worth 50 to 100k each, but there are only two that I'd recommend above all else. Halls of Flesh Shaping is one. It takes five minutes to run, and it drops the Living Fluid Battle Pet. Uh, this only drops from LFR Primordius, and like no one else is running it. It sells for 100 to 400k. Uh, you can also get the Son of Animus pet here. Another good instance is the Downfall of Garrosh. Uh, you've got the Black Fuse Bombling for 100k off the first boss, uh, Kovak off the second boss, and personally, I've heard Garrosh and Thrall yelling at each other enough. I just leave instance before that fight. So, that's it. Takes about 30 minutes to do this route with the LFR stuff. It takes a little longer, but you only do that once a week. With some super rough napkin math, uh, it's about 1.3 to 1.8 million gold per month per tune you do this with. You know what? One final thing before I go. Y'all are going to go out and y'all are going to try this. Some of y'all are going to get lucky. If you do get a pet, Come back here, let me know in the comments. I'll give you a high five. If you haven't sold pets before though, please, they sell slowly. Dropping your price does not help them sell any faster. It just tanks the market. You undercut by 5%, another person does, rinse repeat for a month, it's selling for a third of what it originally does. So please, do me a solid and only ever undercut by one copper. But that is it. Subscribe if you want to see more of my guides in the future. There's a little notification bell next to the subscribe button, so click that. Also, these videos take a long time to make, so if you liked it, you know, just hit that thumbs up button, girl. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, have a great day. Good luck and happy gold making.